So did the ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sunland, did he confirm, contrary to his earlier testimony, that there had been a quid pro quo between President Donald Trump and the Ukrainian government? Military aid for dirt was what they're saying. Now, ABC, CNN, MSNBC, uh, they're all saying it today that, oh, yes, he confirmed a quid pro quo did happen. He did confirm it. Ladies and gentlemen, as we learned with ABC yesterday, you have to parse, you have to listen to what they say, because what they say is, uh, is, is, is a slim margin of what the truth is in most cases. He said that he presumed that there was a prid quo quo, not that he had any firsthand knowledge of one, not that Donald Trump or anybody else had told him that there's a quid pro quo. In fact, the president said directly the opposite, a quote from the president, I don't want a quid pro quo, but he presumed that there was one, even without firsthand knowledge. And other witnesses have testified there was no such quid pro quo at all. Volkler, we can go on and on and on. Sunland testified earlier there was no quid pro quo, and then he amended it yesterday and came back and said that he had presumed there was a quid pro quo, that is, he did not have direct knowledge of one. And he told the Ukrainians that a quid pro quo was likely, that is, he didn't know with any kind of certainty. But don't let the facts get in the way of a good story when it comes to the American media. Let's go to somebody who tells the truth, and that's John Hayward at Breitbart.com. If you want an honest-to-goodness uh, news source, go to Breitbart every single morning and see what they're talking about over there, and look up John Hayward. And by the way, get the book, too, Dr. Zero, Year One. Good morning, John. Good morning. Thanks for having me again. This all is just like the Trump-Russia collusion hoax, isn't it? Yes. Every day they find some little nitpicky thing, and they try to turn it into a bombshell, and they don't explain exactly what happened or why it's supposed to be significant or what really went on. But it's always just enough fuel to keep the engine chugging and keep the story rolling along and keep it on the front pages. Well, you know, and Nolte points out over at Breitbart that if Trump had demanded a quid pro quo, he would have been doing his job. He would have actually been doing what he was supposed to be doing here, what other administrations have done. But when Donald Trump does it, boy, that's a bad thing. That's, a, that's breaking the law right there. Well, most of the Democrat candidates for president are running around right now boasting about all the quid pro quos they're going to inflict, especially on Israel. They all hate Israel, so they're all talking about all the quid pro quos they're going to demand of Israel or they're going to suspend its aid. And, of course, Joe Biden famously did exactly what Trump is accused of and bragged about it and thought he was such a big, tough guy you know, for, for pushing the Iranian prosecutors around. This is all just so ridiculous, and it, it really feels like the, the gas tank is hitting the fumes right now. I think it's had an effect. It, it clearly has gotten some bad news circulating day after day after day and that yeah. don't be the bad news can hurt a politician even if nobody really knows exactly what's going on even if nobody reading the news could tell you exactly what happened or what was wrong here they do pick up that air of negative coverage and it affects their opinions but i don't see how this is going to last all the way to the election and mcconnell says there ain't no way he's going to be removed from office if it makes it over here to the senate you can forget about it but maybe we ought to pray that it does make it to the senate it might be kind of cool to see that klobuchar and harris and Elizabeth Warren, and I can go on and on and name those in the Senate that have to be over there in the Senate, and they must be present for an impeachment hearing instead of out on the campaign trail. That might be fun to watch. That would be interesting. And also, of course, if it goes to the Senate, then you start having the other side being able to act yep. and call witnesses, and they're going to call people like Adam Schiff and put him under oath, and that would be a very bad day for Adam Schiff. You know, he does not want to be put under oath. So I, I wonder if they're even going to go through with all that. It just feels like, you know, this this whole plane is currently coasting. It's like an airplane that ran out of gas, and it's kind of floating along, and now the nose is going to start tipping down. Because what else have they got? They, they've beaten this thing to death, and they haven't come up with anything that's an impeachable offense. Let's go over now to the ABC story from Amy Robach yesterday when she was talking about how she had this story on Epstein for three years and that ABC had walked, you know, slow walked it or, or just thrown it in the can for three years. Of course, three years ago, Hillary Clinton was involved in a, a contest for the presidency in 2016. We know that that was going on at that time, but uh, as we found out, as, day, as the day went on yesterday, ABC put out a statement, well, it didn't reach our standards. And so then she puts out a statement that said, well, it didn't reach the standards. And I was just upset when the hot mic moment happened and all that. But at the same time, you got 60 Minutes in Australia that is going to air a piece with Virginia Roberts, who had been in hiding for 12 years. And now she's coming out of hiding and telling her side of the story. And it's salacious as all get out about Jeffrey Epstein and his very powerful and very rich buddies and what they were doing to her when she was 15, 16 
17 years old, and others that she saw. And she has photographic evidence that she is showing on television now. And she's got a lawsuit. She's testifying. She's doing all this stuff with all this evidence. And yet ABC and the others were willing to push this false narrative about Brett Kavanaugh all that time without one shred of evidence. This woman was in hiding for 12 years, came out of hiding, and has pictures to prove that she was with Epstein in New York and in, in New Mexico and on the airplane and the island and everywhere else. She's proving it with photographic evidence, and yet that doesn't reach their standard, but Christine Blasey Ford reached their standard. How does that work out? Well, and never mind Christine Blasey Ford, even, even the more preposterous things that happened during the Kavanaugh yes. saga, everything, it was immediately rushed to print. No standards, no fact-checking, no nothing. A billion interviews for that sleazy Michael Avenatti and whoever he decided right. to bring out. They didn't have any standards when it came to Brett Kavanaugh. That's ridiculous. I mean, this is an insult to your intelligence to hear an excuse like this coming out of ABC. And also nothing in this so-called hot mic moment sounds like a reporter upset that standards were not met for a story they wanted to run with. She's yelling about a couple up and she's right it was a cover-up it was always a cover-up they covered up for epstein for a long time because he had a lot of powerful well-connected people that were his clients and his special friends paramount among them bill clinton and they didn't want a story like that going nuclear right when hillary clinton was going to try to run for president simple as that yeah. nothing more to it yeah they got the the stephanopoulos uh, connection stephanopoulos by the way apparently was at a party at epstein's house and uh so i mean all that story is out there as well so you've got all this stuff that's all swirling around all of these guys concerning Epstein, and this story is thrown away three years ago while the 2016 election is going on, and I just think they have some explaining to do if they're willing to push the Russian hoax and they're willing to push the Kavanaugh hoax and all these other hoaxes that clearly there was not not one shred of evidence for any of that, and this woman's coming forth with evidence, and what troubles me most about this, in the three ensuing years since they walked past this story, decided not to air it, how many other people may May have been, and I don't know the answer this, may have been violated in that same way. Right. How many other people were put at risk? This right. is not a double standard. You hear that phrase a lot. A double standard really would be if they had honestly decided in their biased minds that this didn't rise to the level of their reporting standards. It obviously did. This was an aggressive cover-up. It wasn't just a double standard. It was the media acting to protect the Clintons, acting to protect other powerful people. Jeffrey Epstein's story is one of the most interesting stories in the world, and you never hear about him. They, they barely even want to discuss his death, never mind what he did when he was alive, because they know how far down that rabbit hole goes. But really, there are fascinating questions here. How did this guy get to be so influential? How did he get to be so rich and powerful? Where the heck did his money come from? We still don't know. He's the most enigmatic, mysterious, horrifying figure in the modern political scene, and they won't do a story about him because it would affect too many people the media supports. John Hayward, Breitbart.com. Read him every time he's in there. Thank you, John. Appreciate it very much. Thanks very much for having me.